Well, what we're going to talk about today is uh, we're going to, unit five is on raceways and conductors. Raceways are conduits or similar housing. whose dual function is to facilitate the installation or removal of electrical, con electrical conductors and to provide protection from mechanical damage. Article 100 defines raceway as an enclosed channel or metallic or non-metallic materials designed expressly for hiding wires, cables, or bus bars, and with additional functions as permitted in the National Electrical Code. The term raceway refers or applies to more than just a tubular conduit. This unit contains regulations for raceway systems that are frequently used, as well as raceway systems that are rarely used. In addition to defining different raceways, other important information is covered, such as minimum and maximum size, installation provisions, fittings, and support requirements. Instructions are presented on how to perform raceway fill calculations, a prerequisite in determining the size of raceway needed for particular circuits. A brief ex explanation of conductors, including embassy amb correction factors and conductor temperature limitations can be found near the conclusion of this unit. The objectives, and after studying this unit, you should know the maximum number of bends for raceways installed between pull ports, have a good understanding of rigid and intermediate metal conduit provisions, be able to determine the type of of uh, restway best suited for each installation. Be familiar with the intermediate metal conduit, IMC, rigid metal conduit, RMC, and electro electrical metallic tubing, EMT, support requirements. Understand the unique characteristics of four types of rigid non-metallic conduits. Thoroughly understand rigid non-metallic con conduit and electrical non-metallic tubing provisions, general and specific. Be familiar with different types of flexible conduit and be able to locate each related article. Be aware of raceway types other than conduit and tubing. S successfully calculate the electrical trade size conduit required for each project. Have a basic grasp of cut conductor properties. You want to be familiar with conduit temperature limitations. Know and understand the provisions pertaining to conductors connecting in parallel. Understand embassy correction factors, including continuous loads and how to apply them. Now, the first things we'll be talking about, these will be sort of in an order. Um, I'm going to talk about suspended drop ceilings, uh, maximum bends in one run, insulated fittings, Raceway supporting raceways, conduit thickness, uh, bending radius. Also, we'll be talking about rigid conduit, which is uh, type RMC, intermediate metal conduit, type IMC, cutting, reaming, and threading, RMC, IMC, and EMT support requirements, RMC and IMC with threaded couplings, horizontal runs through framing members, EMT finished in walls. EMT used as equipment grounding conductor. Electrical metallic tubing, type EMT. Rigid polyvinyl chloride conduit, which is PVC, and securing rigid PVC conduit. Bending rigid PCV conduit, securing electrical non-metallic tubing, ENT. Electrical non-metallic tubing, um, ENT through framing members, ENT luminate, luminaire whips light, hey, used to power lighting fixtures. Flexible metal conduit type FMC and the FMC support, FMC installation. Liquid flexible metal conduit type FL, LFMC. Grounded liquid type flexible metal conduit and liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit, which is also type L, F, and C. Other raceways, you're going to talk, we're going to talk about surface non-metallic raceways, surface metal raceways, strut type channel raceways, underfloor raceways, underfloor raceway coverings, cellular metal floor raceways. Other raceways, cellular concrete floor raceways, wire 
ways metal and non-metallic wire ways installation and wire way supports raceway fill we're going to talk about same size conductors different size conductors raceway containing multi-conductor cables nipple fill raceway fill percentage conductors in parallel maximum amputees conductor temperature limitations 100 amperes or less conductor properties conductor tem temperature limitations over 100 amperes amputee correction and adjustment factors continuous loads and support requirements for conductors and vertical raceways now we're going to talk about we're going to go through all these here kind of pretty much as it was stated in that outline uh, suspended drop ceilings uh, raceways can be supported by independent additional support wires secured at both ends support wires and associated fittings must provide a, uh, adequate support now this is referred to in uh, article 300.11 section a you're going to need to refer to some of these articles in the book as we go through this at times I, when I can think of it I'll give you the page numbers for these articles in the book but um, anyway uh, boxes can be secure by attaching independent additional so support wires at both ends in other words you don't use the support wires for that are used to ha hang up the uh, hang the ceiling grid um, secure support must be provided by the support wires and associated fittings. That's also covered in 300.11. Uh, ceiling grid support wires shall not be used to support raceways. Certain boxes can be mounted to suspended ceiling framing members. EMT conduit must be fastened securely within three feet of all boxes, outlet function devices, etc. That's in 358.30 section A. Suspended ceiling system framing members used to support laminators must be securely fastened to one another as well as to the building structure at appropriate intervals. Laminators must be securely fastened to ceiling framing members by mechanical means, bolts, screws, rivets, etc. Listing, listed clips identified for use with the type of ceiling frame members and luminaires are also permitted, and that's covered in section 410.36, section B. Okay, maximum bends in one run, the equivalent of four quarter bends, 360 degrees total, is the maximum allowed between pull points, for example, conduit bodies and boxes. Because the total bends in this conduit run is 340, this installation falls within specs. Now, you're looking at that drawing on the right, okay, and you add up all those bends. You got a 10 degree bend here, you got a 10 degree, that's 20, and then you add all these up, as long as between the two pull boxes, which are these two outlets. Or these area here, you're at uh, uh, 340, I think is what it was. So they're covering from this box to this box. The maximum number of bends cannot be over 360 degrees. So you add up each one of these degrees, and and it adds up to 340. Generally, raceway installation must be complete between outlet junction or splicing points prior to installation of conductors. All bends are counted. Even those lo located immediately adjacent to the pull box, a box offset with two 10 degree bends is counted as 20 degrees. And we're talking about down here. You got a 10 there and a 10 there. So it goes back towards the support member and it's 20 degrees. Okay, an insulated fitting is not required if a smooth rounded flare entry for conductors is provided by the threaded hubs or bosses that are integral part of a cabinet box enclosure. Okay, we're talking about in here. Where the raceways can containing four gauge or larger insulated conductor so enter a cabinet box enclosure or raceway, the conductors must be protected by an identified fitting that provides a smooth rounded insulated surface unless the conductors are separate from the fitting or raceway by an, an, another securely attached identified insulation material. This is covered in 300.4. Conduit bushings can 
constructed completely of insulation material shall not be used to secure fitting or raceway. Conduits not used as raceways may support raceways if fastened securely in place with approved fittings. This is covered in 300.11 section B. Raceways shall not be used to support other raceways, cables, conduits, or non-electrical equipment unless the raceway or means of support is identified as a means of support. Um, in other words, you know, it's sturdy enough to handle everything. Conduit contains, um, raceways containing power supply conductors for electrical controlled equipment can support class two circuit conductors or cables used solely for connecting to the equipment's control circuits. In the drawing there, you'll see the bottom conduit is being supported by the top conduit. And usually that has some other support material. Either it's uh, got uh, wires going up towards to the ceiling rafters to support the conduit. And then this support is provided to the second conduit. And usually what's in there is control wires for powering. Like, and this is a furnace. You have your conductors there. Um, the conduit contains power supply conductors for the HVAC unit. So you have to have a way of providing power to the unit. So usually that's what it's done. Now we're going to get into conduit thickness. The internal diameters for each electrical trade size conduit and tube, they're listed on table four in chapter nine, which is in the back of your book. That's the last chapter with all the charts and graphs. And tables. Um, 10 gauge uh, THHN conductors are permitted in a three quarter inch EMT. Now these go into the different numbers of conductors that are in uh, uh, be able to use in the different types of uh, tubing or uh, conduit. 11 10 gauge THHN conductors are permitted in one quarter inch IMC. Okay, IMC has a thicker wall, so uh, 10 gauge a, uh, THHN conductors are permitted in uh, 3 quarter inch RMC. This is your RMC, okay, that's your rigid body metal conduit. Okay, Annex C preceding the index in the back of the code book can be used to find the maximum number of conductors permitted in each electrical trade size conduit or tubing. And I'd refer you to that. That's a pretty good place to go for that if you're looking for figuring out conduit capacities. Now we're going to get into bending radius. Uh, here's a little table here with telling you that the bending radius is uh, bends may be made so that the conduit or tubing remains undamaged with its internal diameter basically undiminished. Um, uh, for any field bend, the radius of the curve to the center line of the conduit must not be less than indicated in well, the table uh, two of chapter nine. Um, and there's a picture of the table two right here and it tells you trade size is half inch. Um, and Basically, your bending radius is four inches on that, and you can see how that's determined by this um, here. You, this number here would be four inches. Rigid metal conduit type RMC um, is a threadable raceway of circular cross section designed for physical protection and routing of conductors and cables, and for use equipment grounding conductor when installed with in Integral or associated coupling and appropriate fittings, as is covered in 344.2. In other words, it can carry ground. RMC is the heaviest, thickest wall um, classification of the metal conduit. Um, threaded couplings and connectors used with the conduit must be made tight. Those buried in masonry or concrete must be concrete tight type. And if installed in wet locations, and must comply with 314.15. And 344.42a. The minimum approved electrical trade size for RMC is a half inch. The maximum approved electrical trade size for RMC is six inches. 
Galvanized steel and stainless steel RMC can be used under all atmospheric conditions within all type of occupancies. That's uh, covered in 344.10, section A, subsection 1. Contact of dissimilar metals except for combination of aluminum and steel should be avoided wherever possible to listen to potential for galvanized action. RMC usually ships in a standard length of 10 feet, including the coupling. Normally, one coupling is furnished with each length. Um, here's a note down here. Is that RMC shall be made of one of the following. should be steel, phosphorus, with or without protective coatings, aluminum, non-phosphorus, red brass, or stainless steel. Um, Galvanized stainless steel and red brass, RMC, elbows, couplings, and fittings can be installed in concrete in direct contact with the earth or in areas subject to severe corrosion influences where corrosion protection is provided and were judged suitable for the condition. And uh, that's basically telling you that you need to be aware of your surroundings of where you're putting this, this material if it's going in the ground. You need to use appropriate condu conduit. Intermediate metal type uh, conduit is IMC. This minimum approved electrical trade size for this um, IMC is one half inch. The maximum approved size for IMC is four inches uh, due to just thinner walls. The definition for intermediate metal conduit and rigid conduit is essentially the same. However, as the name applies, IMC is lighter in weight and can constructed with thinner walls than RMC. IMC is a steel threadable raceway of cross-section designed for physical protection and routing of conductors and cables and for use as an equipment grinding conductor when installed with its integral uh, associated couplings. Cutting, reaming, and threading. Uh, electrical and metallic tubing must not be threaded uh, Factory threaded integral couplings can be used. Okay. Um, all EMT cut ends must be reamed and finished to remove any burrs when you cut them. All cut ends of IMC and RMC must be reamed or otherwise finished, like with the wire brush, or to remove rough edges. Running threads shall not be used on conduit for coupling connections. Threaded conduit in the field requires a standing cutting die with a three quarter inch taper per one inch. To 16, and that's covered in 342.28 to and 344.28. Now RMC, IMC, and EMT support requirements. Uh, the maximum support interval for RMC, IMC, and EMC is 10 feet. And in addition, each conduit or tube must be securely fastened within three feet of each conduit termination, outlet box, junction box, etc. Uh, if structural members are not available within three, three feet, a distance of five feet is acceptable for IMC and RMC. Unbroken lengths of EMT without coupling can be fastened within five feet, where structural members do not readily permit fastening within three feet. That means as you, you have the thinner walled material, it's got to be, it has tighter constraints on uh, clamping and providing support for it because it's thin material. RMC, IMC with threaded coupling. Straight runs of RMC and IMC made up of with threaded coupling can be supported in accordance with table 344.30b subsection 2, providing such supports prevent transmission of stress determination where con conduit is deflected between supports. The distance between supports as the conduit size increases. In other words, the bigger size diameter, you know, you don't have to support it every 10 feet. You could probably go 12 feet. The distance between supports can be increased to 20 feet for exposed vertical risers from industrial machine or fixed equipment, provided the conduit is made up with threaded couplings. The conduit is supported and securely fastened at the top and the bottom of the riser, and no other means of intermediate support is readily available. These are vertical lines. They're talking about this type right here. So if you've got a machine in a factory or a plant that you need to run some power to, you can run a vertical to it, but it's got to be RMC or IMC type threaded uh, tubing conductor. 
and what we also call a conduit. Horizontal runs through mem uh, framing members. Horizontal runs of RMC, IMC, and EMT that are supported by openings through framing members at intervals not greater than 10 feet and are fastened securely within 3 feet of terminal coils are permitted. EMT fished in walls for concealment work in finished buildings or pre-finished panels where standard security is impractical. Unbroken lengths without coupling of electrical metal tubing can be fished. To comply with this exception, the fish portion of the tubing in the wall must have not have any couplings. Normally, the EMT must be fastened within three feet of the device box. Uh, finished walls don't provide access to do this. So if you're running conduit and you can't get it, uh, you know, your box is going to be anchor point for that. EMT used as equipment grounding conductor. Um, EMT can serve as an equipment grounding conductor, and it's they talk about that in section 215, 250.118 section 4 and article 358.60. A raceway used as equipment grounding conductor as provided in those sections I just mentioned must comply with section 250.4, section A, subsection 5, or 250.4, section B, subsection 4. EMT must be supported in accordance with the uh, provisions of 358.30. And where raceways or cables are exposed to direct sunlight or above rooftops, the adjustments shown in table 310.15b Subsection 3, section, subsection C shall be added to the outdoor temperatures to determine the applicable ambient temperature for application of correction factors in Table 310. And this has to do with uh, empathy adjustment, your current adjustment, because if there's higher temperatures, you have to adjust the, the system to handle less current or you know, put in different conductors that will handle the current that you need to supply to that continuous load. And we'll get into that in a little bit towards the end of this unit. Electrical tubing uh, that we're going to talk about EMT. And it's an unthinned Unthreaded thin walled raceway of circular cross section designed for physical protection and routing of conductors and cables for use as equipment grounding conductor when appropriate fittings are installed. Again, this is the thinnest of the conduit that you'll see out there. And normally they don't thread them, they, they usually type, you can see those junctions here. They use those in uh, areas where there's not need for a lot of protection. EMT, the thinnest walled classification of metal non-flexible raceways, provides protection from all but severe physical damage. The maximum uh, approved size is uh, half, or minimum, is half inch, and the maximum is four inches. All EMT cut ends must be reamed or otherwise sanded for any uh, burrs on the end. Couplings and connectors used with the tubing must be made tight. Buried in masonry concrete must be concrete tight, light, tight type. Install in wet locations and must comply with 314.15. Rigid polyvinyl chloride conduit. Now, we use a lot of PVC out there. You'll see it everywhere. Um, it provides good um, uh, protection. There's already... There's there's pre-bent 90s and 45s that you can buy, so they're bent from the factory. You don't bend them. Again, I recommend that you follow along in the in the illustration book while I go through this video. It'd be kind of helpful. Now, down here we have the different types of conductors. This one right here has got some threads on it. Usually, if you have to clamp it inside of a box, you'll get that, and you get the little nut that goes on it. That star nut, and then you put your conduit in there and glue it down. Um, NEC identifies five types of rigid PVC conduit. They have Schedule 80, Schedule 40, 
and uh, type A uh, PVC is a thin walled raceway with wall thickness conforming to uh, schedule IPS dimensions. This is limited to underground installations and type EB PVC is thin walled raceway with wall thicknesses designed to achieve a better pipe stiffness of 20 pounds. And HDPE Schedule 40 is high density polyethylene raceway with a wall thickness conforming to Schedule 40 dimensions. It's also limited to underground installations and can be direct buried with or without encasing in concrete. Um, rigid polychloride conduit is rigid non metallic raceway, a circular cross section. All points between lengths of conduit and between conduit couplings, fittings, and boxes must be made by approval method. All cut ends must be trimmed inside and out to remove rough edges. Um, expense and fittings must be provided for PVC conduit to compensate for thermal expansion and contraction where the length change is expected to be a quarter inch or greater in accordance with the table um, in, in uh, 352.44. In a straight run between securely mounted items such as boxes, cabinets, elbows, or other conduits, the minimum approved electrical trade size for PVC conduit is a half inch, maximum of six inch. Expansion and contra contraction problems generally do not arise in underground PVC conduit ap applications, and only listed fittings are to be used with the PVC conduit to it. Now we're going to get into securing the PVC. Each conduit must be fastened securely within three feet of all terminations. Uh, the table 352.30 support provisions must be followed for PVC conduit. Uh, PVC, PVC must be fastened so that movement from thermal expansion or contraction is permitted. So you see those clamps there? Don't tighten them all the way down, but get them good and secure, but just have a little bit of movement in them so you can have some horizontal movement if that's a horizontal mounting. Um, horizontal runs of PVC that are supported by openings through framing members at intervals not greater than those of the table uh, 352.30 and are secured to be fastened within three feet. Termination points are permitted. So again, we're talking about different methods of attachment based on the size of the, the thickness of the conduit the diameter also. Securing the um, like EMT tubing, um, the equipment of the four quarter bins can have 360 total is the maximum between full points. Electrical non-metallic tubing must be secured every three feet. Bends must be made so that the tubing is undamaged and the tube's internal di diameter is not uh, reduced. And ENT must be fastened securely with, within three feet of each outlet box, device, junction box, cabinet, or other termination point. So you gotta have one at the, at the box, and you're gonna have some, some, you know, on your three foot sections. Uh, non electrical, non metallic tube, and ENT for the complete listing of ENT uses permitted and not permitted, you can go to uh, Article 362.10 and 12. Uh, electrical non-metallic tubing is a pliable car gate raceway, a circular cross-section with integral or associated couplings, connectors, and fittings listed in, for the installation of electrical conduits. It is composed of material that is flame retardant as well as resistant to moisture and chemical atmospheres. All cut-ins must be trimmed inside and out. The maximum improved electrical size is 2 inches. The minimum approved is one half inch. Uh, an approved method must be used for all joints between lengths of tubing and between tubing and couplings, fittings, and boxes. Here's your little connectors. Um, this 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 material or this conduit can't be exposed to direct sunlight unless identified as sunlight resistant. If it's not, then you can't use it outside or one where the sun's going to be beaten down on it. Now, ENT through framing members. 
you know, the board hole is less than one and a quarter inches from the edge of the framing member, the raceway must be protected. And we've gone over this before with a steel plate that's a sixteenth inch thick. Holes must be bored so that the edge of the hole is at least a one and a quarter from the nearest edge of the wood. Um, e and T must be securely fastened in place with three foot of all termination points. Horizontal runs of ENT can be supported by openings through the framing members at intervals not greater than three feet. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. We've gone over that before with other materials, so it's pretty much the same. Flexible metal conduit. Um, this um, FMC is a raceway of circular cross section made of helically wound. Uh, formed an interlocking metal strip. FMC must be listed and must be used and exposed and concealed, can be used in exposed and concealed systems. The minimum electrical size, trade size is half inch maximum. Um, the flexible com metal conduit is often referred to as greenfield or simply called flex. That's what I know it as flex. And essentially it's two in, you know, it's, it's one half inch in it. That's usually the standard. Um, the equivalent of four quarter bends total is the maximum bends between pull points. Uh, bends must be made so that the conduit is not damaged and the conductor's internal diameter is not in effectively reduced. All cut ends must be trimmed. Angle connectors shall not be used for concealing raceway installations. And here are some of the connectors. We've used these, they'll just go into a box. Uh, these are other different type of boxes, but they'll screw on to the end. You've got that screw there that tightens down. Um, and um, then there's the one that's got that star nut on it that screws it, that clamps down on a box. And um, now supporting FMC, um, it must be securely fastened in place by improved means. FMC must be secured within 12 inches of each box, cabinet, conduit body, or other conduit termination. And then you can refer to table 348.22 for maximum number of conductors permitted in the 3 8 inch flex. The length of flex from a luminary terminal or tap connections as permitted, uh, according to article, 410.117 to luminaries is six feet or less. Supporting is not required. And um, horizontal runs of FMC can be supported by openings through framing members at intervals not greater than four and a half feet if securely fastened within 12 inches of each termination point. FMC of three quarter inch in electrical size can be used for one enclosed. Closing the leads of motors is permitted in Article 430.254, Section B2, and lengths not to exceed six feet as part of a listed assembly for tap connectors to illuminate to luminaires as permitted in Article 410.117, Section C, or for utilizing equipment for manufactured wiring system is permitted in hoist ways as permitted and as or as parts of a listed assembly to connect wired luminaire sections as permitted in uh, these other sections 410.137. And you can see in the drawing there, um, essentially you have your flex, you got a half inch flex going there, you got a box so that it's being mounted to the to the rafter and it's clamped to the rafter and then you have the flex coming down to your light fixture. Okay, FMC installation um, equipment grounding conductors are required for circuits over 20 amps. For lengths of three feet or less, required flexibility in 20 inch and 12 inch securing distance can be waived. In other words, lengths are see there. You got a water heater and uh, running a 30 amp circuit. Um, if an equipment bonding jumper is required around uh, FMC, it must be installed in accordance with 250.12. Listed FMC can serve as grounding means 
if the conduit is terminated in listed fittings, the circuit conductors contained there are, therein are protected by overcurrent device rated 20 amps or less. The total length of, in any ground fault current is 12, is 6 feet or less. And four, the conduit is not installed where flexibility is necessary to minimize the transmission of vibration from equipment or to provide flexibility for equipment that requires movement. FMC must be secured within 12 inches of each box, cabinet, conduit body, or other con conduit termination. An equipment grounding conductor must be installed in the FMC uh, used to connect equipment where flexibility is necessary to maintain the transmission of vibration from equipment or to provide flexibility for whatever the requirement requires movement of after the installation. In other words, what they're talking about there is if you have a um, piece of equipment that you're moving around or that you have a motor that vibrates a lot, it's hard to use solid conduit because you know it, it moves around and and can have issues. So using the flex is a good thing. Now we're going to get into um, liquid tight flexible metal conduit and it's designated as LFMC. Um, again, this can only have equivalent of four quarter bends, 360 degrees max, as a maximum allowed pull between pull points. Liquid tight flexible metal conduit is a raceway of circular cross section having an outer liquid tight non metallic sunlight resistant jacket over an inner flexible metal core with associated coupling connectors and fittings. The maximum electrical trade size for LFMC is half inch. That's the minimum size, I mean. And the most number of conductors allowed in a three-quarter inch conduit must not exceed the limit set in table 348.22. LFMC and associated fittings must be listed. Angle connectors shall not be concealed. The maximum number of approved electrical tri trade size for LFMC is four inches. And... Um, LFMC is often referred to as zeolite. Okay. So if you hear that term, that's what they're talking about. It's a liquid tight flexible metal conduit. Um, LFMC is used to connect equipment where flexibility is necessary to maintain the transmission of vibration from equipment or to provide flexibility for equipment that requires movement after installation must have equipment grounding conductor. Um, a listed LFMC three eighths and through one and a quarter inch can be used as grounding means. If the total length of the flexible conduit any ground fault current path is not more than six feet, the conduit is terminated in listed fittings, and the conduit conductors contained therein are protected by overcurrent devices rated at 20 amps or less for three quarter inch and half inch electrical trade sizes and 60 amps or less for three quarter inch through one and one quarter inch in electrical trade sizes. LFMC can serve as a grounding means as covered in uh, article 250.1186. If an equipment bonding jumper is required around the LFMC, it must be installed in accordance with the uh, section or article 250.110 of uh, 102. Um, we're going to get a liquid tight flexible non metallic conduit installation. Um, here we have strapping is not required in lengths of six feet or less from a luminaire terminal connection for tap conductors to luminaires. Support is not required for a fished LFNC. Horizontal rounds of LFNC can be supported by openings through framing members at intervals not greater than three feet if securely fastened within 12 inches of each termination point. Securing and supporting is not required for LFNC-B where installation and lengths not exceeding six feet from the last point of support for connections within an accessible saline to luminaries or other equipment. LFNC must be securely fastened at intervals not greater than three feet. 
They also must be secured within 12 inches of each connection and where flexibility is necessary, LFMNC can be secured within three feet of the termination. Now we're going to get into surface non-metallic raceways. We've seen these in cubicles. These uh, where surface non-metallic raceways are used in combination for both signaling and lighting and power circuits. The different wiring systems must be run in separate compartments identified by stamping and printing or color coding of the interior finish. Only what they're talking about there is the signal is usually data and power. You run power and data cable like cat5 cat6 cable in the same conduit because you get a lot of electromagnetic interference interfering with the signal on your signal cable service non-metallic raceway construction must be visibly distinguishable from other raceways surface non-metallic raceways and their fittings must be designed so that sections can be mechanically coupled together installed without subjecting the wires to abrasion. Everything is pretty much powder coated and pretty nice. Um, surface metal raceways. Um, the construction must be distinguishable from other raceways, surface mounted ra metal raceways and their fittings must be designed so that sections can be electrically and mechanically coupled together installed without subjecting the wires to abrasion. Again, the big thing here is you want to protect the insulation and the wires from shorting together. So any movement of the conductors inside the uh, conduit or the raceway uh, where there's sharp edges or anything that could cause scraping of the insulation or when you're pulling cables, you don't want them to grip against something and, and cut the insulation off inside your conduit. So you can see that they're really adamant about making sure that your raceways are very smooth because you got to pull conductors through these after you put the conductor after you put the raceways in. So because they don't have the conductors in them when you mount them. Um, Unbroken lengths of surface metal raceway can pass transversely through dry walls, dry partitions, and dry floors. Access to conductors must be maintained on both sides of the wall partition. Um, that's where you have access points, access boxes, and stuff like that. Fret type channel raceways. Um, you can use uh, table 348.22 to determine a maximum number of conductors permitted in strut type channel raceway and um, you can use the ch channel 9 tables. Now this is a system where you have um, an I-beam that's like part of the support structure for the building and you have clamps and poles that you clamp your luminaires and, and your bus bars and these are bus boxes or bars and um, they will be attached to the ceiling and they have bars coming down to hold them up. And you can see there, there's a light where there's a 110 outlet there that you plug that light into. And then there's over here where the fluorescent is, there's also one. Those are being run through that bus bar. Um, again, the splices and taps are permitted in raceways to provide access after installation via, via removable cover, which is right here. We're talking about right there. So you can get the stuff. Um, underfloor raceways, basically the same thing applies. Underfloor raceways defined as a raceway and associated components designed and intended for installation beneath or flush with the surface of a floor for the installation of cables and electrical condu conductors. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. Conductors between raceways and distribution centers and wall outlets must be made by approved fittings. Underfloor raceways can be installed beneath a concrete or flooring material surface. In office occupancies, installation flush with concrete floor and covered with linoleum. The combination cross section area of all conductors uh, or cables must not exceed 40% of the interior cross-section area of the raceway. So in other words, you, you can't stuff it with cables. The size of conductors installed must not be larger than that for the underfloor raceways design. 
and that's specified in 390.5, Article 390.5. Inserts must be leveled and sealed to prevent entrance of concrete. Metal raceway inserts must also be metal and must be electrical continuous with the raceway. When an outlet is abandoned, discontinued, or removed, the supply and circuit conductor must be removed from the raceway. Splices or reinsulated conductors, such as would occur in the case of abandoned outlets or loop wiring, are not allowed in raceways. In other words, you've got to pull the conductors out if you've taken out whatever you were powering. Uh, splices and taps are acceptable only with injunction boxes, continuous unbroken conductor connecting the individual outlets is not considered a splice or tap. Cellular metal floor raceways. They have a combination cross-section area of conductors or cables and must not exceed 40% of the cell or header's interior. And again, the junction boxes must be leveled a cellular metal ra floor raceway is defined in Article 370 as the hollow spaces of cellular metal floors together with suitable fittings that may be approved as enclosed channel for electrical conductors. Conductors larger than one or odd gauge can be installed only by special permission. Inserts must be leveled to the floor grade and sealed against entrance of concrete. Connections between raceways and distribution centers and wall outlets shall be made by means of liquid, tight, flexible metal conduit. Flexible metal conduit were not installed in concrete, rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, electrical, met metallic tubing, or approved fittings. Splices and taps are made only in the header access units or junction boxes. A header is a transverse raceway for electrical conduit Inductors providing access to predetermined cells of the cellular floor, metal floor, accommodating the installation of electrical conductors from a distribution point uh, center to the cells. And that's what these are right here. E. Um, that's your raceway. A cell is a single enclosed tubular space in a cellular floor member whose axis is parallel to the axis of the metal floor member. Cellular concrete floor raceways, again, they have the um, same requirements. You know, you, they got to be leveled. Uh, you talk about the headers and make mechanically secure to the top of the precast cellular concrete floor. The header must be electrically continuous throughout its entire length. Conductors larger than one ought can be installed only by special permission. And the combined cross-section area of all conductors must not exceed 40% of the cell header's cross-section area. And um, again, the same thing with all of these. When you abandon out, when an outlet is removed, abandonment or discontinue removing the section of circuit conductors supplying the outlet from the raceway. So you don't want any exposed wires or wires that are not being used. You can't leave them in place. Uh, wire arrays, which are sheet metal and flame retardant, non metallic, are troughs with hinges or removable covers for housing and protecting electrical wires and cables. The complete raceway system is installed before conductors are laid in place. Okay. Um, some of the cross-section area of all conductors must not ex exceed 20% of the raceway's cross interior cross-section area. Uh, again, you know the uh, you can't put any conductors in there that aren't designed for that raceway. And um, wire. Wireways containing four gauge or larger conductors and used in junction or pull box must be sized according to 314.28a or 314.71. Now, wireway installation. Um, here we have like a box with some feed coming in. Um, you're going out to uh, 
different areas. Uh, one's got a loop coming in. And then on the right side, you got um, H, which is extension from wireways, can be made with cord pendants, which is flex or something like that. Uh, liquid tight conduit or even uh, some PVC. Um, non metallic wireways should not be used where subject to physical damage in any hazard classified location except it was permitted by other articles in the code. We're exposed to sunlight unless listed and marked as suitable for that purpose. We're subject to ambient temperatures. We're subject to ambient temperatures um, other than those for which the non-metallic wireway is listed. And for conductors whose insulation temperature limitations would exceed those for which the raceway is li listed. Accessible splices and taps are permitted within a wireway. Closed closed all dead ends with listed fittings. And um, unbroken wireway lanes can pass transversely through walls. Access to the conductors must be maintained on both sides of the wall. Matter wireways are not permitted where subject to severe physical damage or severe corrosion environment. And extensions from wireways can be made with cord pendants installed in accordance with 400.10. That's the letter H down there on the right. Wireways installed in wet locations must be listed for the purposes. Extreme cold may cause non-metallic railways to become brittle, and therefore more susceptible to damage from physical contact. You have to keep in, again, keep, keep in mind your area. When transporting, transposing cable size into raceway size, the minimum trade size, which is the metric designator, raceway required for the number and size of conductors in the table shall be used. And these tables are 376.23 Baker and 378.23 B. Now we're going to get into wireway supports. Or here you have different types of boxes and the way they're supported. Ours only run wireways must be supported at each end. Maximum distance between supports for individual lengths of metal wireway must not exceed 10 feet. Non-metallic wireway support intervals must not exceed 3 feet. Uh, individual non-metallic wireways must be supported as listed and in no case shall be the distance between supports exceed 10 feet. Individual metal wireway lengths longer than five feet run horizontally must be supported at each end of a joint unless listed otherwise. Uh, horizontally run wireways must support at each end. And um, there's some pictures of them down there. You've probably seen those before. Um, same size conductors. Now we're going to talk about what we're putting in these, this tubing that we've been talking about. Um, now there's an information annex and, and it's called Annex C. It's located in the back of the code book. And this can be used to find the maximum number of conductors permitted in a particular wasteway, conduit or tubing. The conductor maximum is based on all conductors in the raceway being the same size. In other words, you're going to have all 12 gauge or 14 gauge wire in there. Table C through C C1 through C12 in affirmative annex C are based on a 40% fill rate for three or more conductors, as permitted in Table 1 of Chapter 9. Informative access C also lists the maximum number of fixture wires permitted in each type of conduit or tubing. Okay. Let's go look at that. Essentially, there's a lot of tables in Annex C, and it looks something like this here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but that's where it's for uh, liquid type type raceways. And um, so you just go in there with the size of the con uh, conduits, the size of the conductors, and it'll tell you how many you can put in there. They're usually 40% of the internal size is how much fill you can put in those. Now, if you're dealing with different size conductors, it's the same size. Um, now, we'll get into raceway containing multi-conductor cables. Multi-conductor cable, optical fiber, or flexible cord, or 
two or more conductors is treated as a single conductor for percentage conduit fill area calculations. To calculate cross-section area of cables with elliptical cross-sections, use the major diameter of the eclipse as a circle diameter. And that's, that's talked about in Chapter 9, Note 9. Although Table 1 in Chapter 9 applies to only to complete conduit or tubing systems, it does not apply to sections of conduit used to protect exposed wiring from physical damage. And uh, Different size conductors. Now Tables 4, 5, and 5A of Chapter 9 are used with a com combination of different size conductors. Um, is installed in a single raceway. The actual values of the conductor, diameter, and area are known. They shall be permitted to be used. Also, the 40% column of Table 4 where there are three or more conductors. Now, I use Table 5 for dimensions of insulation, insulated conductors and Table 5A for dimensions of insulated compact conductors. Uh, and Include equipment grounding on or bonding jumpers, if any, when calculating raceway fill. And Table 4 contains trade size information for 12 different types of conduits and tubing. Columns include internal diameters and total area, also referred to as a cross-section area. Table 4 also shows a maximum percent fill rate for the tubing of, or conductors containing different numbers of con, uh, conductors. Now we're going to talk about nipple fill. This is a, if you look at that drawing there, that's usually a nipple is a, a piece of tubing that's uh, six inches or less. When here they show 24 inches, but I usually use them six, 10, 12 inches. You know, you'll use them coming from a box up to something, another box, or one conductors. A length of conduit or tubing measured 24 inches or less is considered a nipple. For nipples, disregard 310.15 adjustment factors. Install between boxes, cabinets, and similar closures. Conduit or tubing nipples can be fitted, filled to 60% of the total cross section area. Raceway fill percentage. Conduit have a single conductor or cable can be filled to 53% of the conduit's cross-section area. Conduit containing exactly two conductors and our cables can only be filled to 31% of the cross-section area. A conduit containing three or more conductors and or cables can be filled to 40% of this cross-section area. When pulling three conductors or cables into a raceway of the ratio of the raceway inside diameter to the conductor or cable outside diameter is between 2.8 and 3.2 jamming can occur. Jamming is less likely to occur when pulling four or more conductors or cables into a raceway. Now jamming is actually what I talked about earlier where you can actually snag a cable when you're pulling it and you want a good smooth pull. Uh, table one based on common conditions of proper cabling and alignment of conductors where the length of the pull and the number of bands are within reasonable limits. Be advised that a large or size conduit or fewer conductors should be considered for certain conditions. And this is described in chapter or shown in chapter nine, table one. Um, now to perform the calculations, calculation ratio of the raceway uh, to conductor or cables divide the total 100% cross-section area of the conduit or tubing by the approximate area of three conductors and or cables. So you take three cables that are of the same, like 12 gauge, you figure out the area, and you divide that by into 100%. Conductors in parallel, that's what we're going to do next. Conductors of one phase Polarity, neutral grounded circuit conductors or equipment grounding conductors can have different physical characteristics from those of another phase. Neutral grounded con circuit conductors or equipment grounding conductors and still, can still, and still ba achieve balance. For example, neutral conductors do not have to be the same length as phase A conductors and phase B conductors. 
or phase A conductors do not have to be the same length as phase B, etc. Uh, as a general rule, one knot and larger size conductors can be connected in parallel, and they can be electrically joined at both ends to form a single conductor. Parallel conductors in each phase, polarity neutral grounded circuit conductor equipment, grounded conductors or equipment bonding jumper must have the same characteristics. And for phase C, it must be all the same length, consists of the same conductor material, be the same size and circular mill area, have the same insulation type, and be terminated in the same manner. You can see the blue wire in there. So, conductors carrying alternating current installed in ferrous metal enclosures or ferrous metal raceways must be so arranged as to avoid heating the surrounding metal by induction. If running separate raceways or cables, the raceways or cables must have the same physical characteristics. And where conductors are in separate raceways or cables, the same number of conditions must be used in each raceway. Um, now, maximum amphases. Amphases for conductors rated 0 to 2,000 volts are specified in the allowable amphase table, which is 310.15B16, through table 310.15B19. In amphase table 310.15B20 and table 310.15B21, as modified by 310.15B1 through B7, Table 310.104A contains specific conductor information such as trade name, letter size, maximum operating temperature applications, provide installation size, and outer covering. Here's the table they're talking about, and it uh, is pretty involved with what they're trying to calculate. I just wanted to show you what it looked. If you wanted to look at it, it's, in, uh, it's on page 170. Uh, Five and around there, so you can look at it and get an idea of what you're looking at with the amphitheater of the conductors. Um, again, you can see uh, it's four gauge copper, but it's different types of conductor and thickness of insulation. It's going to determine the amphitheater, and they're also talking about uh, uh, the amount, maximum amount of amperes. You know, you can see there's less insulation, more conductors in here than in this one. So you can have 90 and 95 amps here and 70 amps here. So uh, conductor temperature limitations, 100 amps or less. Again, um, you know your normal equipment termination uh, provisions for circuits rated 100 amps or less, or or marked for 14 gauge through 1 gauge conductors are used only for conditions rated 60. C Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit and because the lowest temperature weakest link is the 140 degrees the amplitude of this conductor shall not exceed 70 amps so they want to lower they want to make sure you don't have you have the right size conductor for the for the load that you're carrying we're going to get into this on continuous loads and figuring out well, the conductor size and, and, and a lot of this is for uh, you understanding the, that they don't want the wires to get hot and then cause issues with inside the raceways where they cause uh, shorting because the insulation can melt and then you have conductors uh, where they short like I had in my house I had some aluminum I had a 50 amp box supplying my shop from my house and there was underground aluminum conductors, which I didn't put in. I don't believe in aluminum conductors. But anyway, I was running a lot of equipment inside the shop, and it drew, all, it drew enough amperage probably where it, those conductors got hot and melted and shorted out. So I had 220 on 110 and because I had 220 coming in there, or 240. And uh, uh, one side had on the box had 220. The other side on the box when you measured it, it only had zero so everything shorted into one conductor and 
and uh, blew up my computers and my lights and stuff like that. So that's what can happen if you have the wrong size uh, conductors in in conduit or whatever your raceway is. There's a good possibility of them heating up and causing you know issues like that. Conductor properties, um, essentially, you got to know what they can, can they can pull. Okay, a six gauge wire or smaller insulated grounded conductor must be identified by a continuous white or gray outer finish, or by three continuous white stripes, other than green insulated along the conductor's length. Um, now, table 310.104A lists the conductors in installation and application. Um, an insulated grounded conductor larger than six gauge shall be identified by either continuous white or gray out of finish. Okay, we talked about that. The amputees listed there are based on the ambient temperature of uh, 86 Fahrenheit. A variety of insulations are listed for both copper and aluminum, or copper-clad aluminum conductors. Um, conductor temperatures limitations over 100 amps. Equip equipment termination provisions for circuits rated over 100 amperes are marked for conductors larger than one, one gauge are used only for conductors with higher temperature ratings, providing the conductor amplitude is based on 75 degrees Celsius or 167 Fahrenheit. Amplitude of the conductor size used is in, in Article 110.14C, subsection 1, subsection B. In Supervised industrial installations where the overcurrent devices is rated over 800 amperes. The amplitude of the conductor it, it protects shall be equal to or, to or greater than 95% of the rating of the overcurrent device specified in uh, 240.6. Three pallet sets of 500 uh, KC mil THHN. Copper conductors do not meet NEC provisions if the overcurrent device is 1,200 amperes, unless the equipment is listed and identified for use with 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, temperature consideration, you, you can't have, you know, things getting really hot. And it also gets into the empathy. You have to make sure that your conductors are rated for the load that it's going to carry. Where conductors of different systems, as provided in uh, 300.3, are installed in the common raceway or cable, the adjustment factor shown in the table shall apply only to the number of power and lighting conductors. If the following are not counted as current carrying conductors when using table 310.15b2a, conductors on cable trays, unless required by 398.80, Conductors in a raceway have a length not exceeding 24 inches. Adjustment factors can shall not apply to underground conduit conductors entering or leaving an outdoor trench if those conductors have physical protection in the form of a rigid metal conduit, intermediate conduit, rigid polyvinyl chloride or PVC, or reinforced thermostat resin conduit having a length not exceeding 10 feet and if number of conductors does not exceed four. Okay, this is kind of a short run. That's what that is, 10 feet of this. Neutral conductors are normally balanced circuits containing three or more conductors and grounding and bonding jumpers. Balance shall be counted as current carrying conductors. A neutral conductor in a three wire circuit consisting of two phase hot wires and a neutral that is fed from a four wire, three phase Y connected system. The neutral conductor of a four wire three phase uh, Y circuit where the majority of the load consists of nonlinear loads because harmonic currents are present in the neutral conductor. 
and examples of electronic equipment such as computers, electronic, electrical discharge, lighting such as fluorescent lights, um, and lights with ballast, adjustable dr speed drive systems, and um, again, grounding conductor of any two wire circuit. And then um, so that kind of goes over that. Here we have adjustment factors for type AC and MC cable. This basically goes over um, the factors and the table numbers um, for unjacketed cables bundled together. And um, table 310.15, section B, subsection 3A, adjustment factors apply to cables bundled together without maintaining spacing for continuous length longer than 24 inches but it will not be necessary to apply the adjustment factors to type AC and type MC cables meeting the conditions in 310.15, section B, subsection 3A, and 4. Raceways and cables exposed to sunlight on rooftops. Uh, this is pretty critical. You just gotta make sure there's some examples there that I advise you to go over on how to calculate that. Where raceways or cables are exposed to direct sunlight or above rooftops, the adjustments shown in 310, table 310.15, section B, subsection 3C, shall be added to the outdoor temperatures to determine the applicable ambient temperature for the application of the corrected factors in, in that said table. Weather resistant type grounding circuit interrupter uh, receptacle with an outlet box hood listed and identified as extra duty. Uh, information note to table 310.15b subsection 3c. The temperature added adders in table I just mentioned are based on measured temperatures rise above the local climate's ambient temperature due to sunlight heating. Again, what they're talking about is if you have 104 degrees on the roof, but the the roof has got a uh, felt dark color that's going to absorb heat. Well, that heat's going to be transferred into your equipment. So that's what they're talking about. Now, continuous loads, ungrounded hot conductors must independently meet requirements for number one, termination correction and adjustment factors through out, throughout the raceway. And you want to see that table 210.14, that's on page 57. And for branch circuit conductors, see the table 315.2, A subsection one for feeder, and that's on page 67. And then conductors and table 230.42, A, and that's on page 87. Because the overcurrent device termination um, implies the continuous load current correction factor. Okay, so we'll go over some of that and understand what they're talking about there. Maximum continuous load permitted on a 20 amp overcurrent device is 16 amps. Because you have uh, your correction factor, you want you take you divide it by 125 percent. And a, and a continuous load is expected to maintain maximum current for three hours or more. That's defined as a, a continuous load. Fluorescent office lighting represents a continuous load. Branch circuit conductors shall have an amplitude not less than the maximum load to be served. Inductors shall be sized to carry not less than the larger of, of the of whatever's in the table there. Where a branch circuit supplies continuous loads or any combination of continuous and non-continuous loads, the maximum branch circuit conductor size shall have an allowable amplitude not less than the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. Okay. So you have a continuous load of maybe 10 amps. And your non-continuous fluctuates up and down. So you add those two together, and if they don't exceed 16 amps, then you're good on a 20 amp circuit. Um, 
the minimum branch circuit conductor sh size shall have an allowable amplitude not less than the maximum load to be served after the application of any adjustable or correction factors. And where a branch feeder circuit supplies any combination of continuous and non-continuous loads, the rating of the overcurrent device shall not be less than the total of the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. After conductor adjustment and correction factors have been applied, overcurrent protection can be determined. So that's what we're talking about there. Now we're going to talk about support uh, requirements for conductors and vertical raceways. There's a table on the right. Talks about the clamping methods in the pictures there. And um, um, if you have any questions, that table with that article 300.19 section C subsection 3 is on page 150 in the book. And again, it's kind of good that if you have this illustration book and the code book handy, and when you're going through these exercises and, and going through the lectures, it's good to stop the lecture and refer to those tables. At least look at them and get an idea of what they are. So if you need to use them in the future, you know you know where to get to them and you're not going to be stymied by it or anything like that. It's a good to be aware of all these tables and what they're for and how they can help in calculating, make sure that you have everything in, a, in according to code. So after that you've gone through this video, you need to take the quiz, and this is unit five. And unit five is due. Uh, hold on a minute. Unit five's quiz is due on the twenty fourth, um, and then the week after that you have the section one test. Okay, and also we're going to start family one family dwellings. But I'll probably have you do the section one quiz on 10-1 and then do the unit six quiz on October 8th. So um, that way you're not too pushed. But as we get further towards the end here, we're going to have quizzes and tests do the same week. So but for right now, we're kind of, you know, we have a little bit of time. But anyway. If you have any questions or anything, just email me at jmurphy at trcc.edu. And if you have any issues with getting to these uh, videos, just uh, send me an email. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. What we have is uh, we're going to go through summary. Now, raceways shall not be supported by ceiling grid wires, but can be supported by independent additional support wires. Raceway shall not be supported, shall not support other raceway cables, conductors, or non-electrical equipment. The max load of conductor conduit bends between full points is four quarter bends, which is 360 degrees. RMC is heavy walled metal ra raceway that can be threaded. IMC is thinner walls that does not, then does RMC and it can also be threaded. Unless made up with threaded couplings, RMC and IMC support requirements are the same as EMT. EMT, the thinnest walled classification of metal non-flexible raceway, provides protection from all but severe physical damage. The distance between PVC supports increases as conduit size increases. Certain raceways permitted as luminaire whips do not require support if installed in lengths of six feet or less. Wireways are troughs, hinged, or removable covers uh, for housing and protecting conductors and cables. Wireways can pass transversely through walls if the length passing through the wall is unbroken and if conductors can be accessed on both sides of the wall. Raceway fill can be calculated from tables 4 and 5 located in Chapter 9. Conduit and tubing nipples can be filled 60% of the cross-section area. Uh, certain conductor properties are listed in Table 310.104a. Conductor temperature limitations must be considered when determining overcurrent protection. Ambient temperature, the number of current carrying conductors, and continuous loads can alter max conductor amplices or overcurrent protection. 
So again, I wanted to just uh, remember what I said at, at, at when we finished before I got to the summary. Um, you know, we're going to have the test. Um, you know, 